number one World Elite Irox versus the Hot Pocket Survivors. Hot Pocket going to be on the blue side. First ban, first pick here for game number one. Rengar going to be the first ban out of the gate. And Vladimir in response from World Elite. So I mean, these are you know, standard standard stuff coming in from Hot Pocket Survivors. Like this is like, you know, pretty, you know, champs that you know, you'd encounter in solo queue that have a, a, a relatively big threat. I'll start Malphite among them also. Uh, Chen, if he's not banned here, I can assume that would be a first pickup for the Hot Pockets. Yeah, no, that would be a very strong first pick. Uh, there are a couple of other guys left, like Ezreal. Um, you know, they, they have to be concerned with the fact that if they take that Shen first, then World Elite is going to be able to pick up, World Elite Irox is going to be able to pick up Ezreal. But um, I don't know, Shen is just kind of, you, you can't allow that pick to go. So um, we'll see what they're banning off. Shen, they ban Shen. So actually, yep. they might take Nunu here or they might take Ezreal. I would expect that either of those two would likely be the pick. Probably Ezreal, I, I would assume, just because he's such a standard AD now. Uh, go oh. for the Morgana first here. Uh, actually on Hot Pocket and you know some teams like uh, and we've seen we've seen Mono Ferris run the, the Morgana support yep. but I think it's kind of like a limited only to them so I'm assuming this is going to be a Morgana mid and uh, with Meat that, Playground as well Poi Welter plays a ton of uh, oh, Morgana yes. oh yeah absolutely and uh, but Sona and Ezreal will be the first pick up here for World Elite and that is a very brutal absolutely brutal bot lane to be going up against yeah, this is a really safe uh, second and third pick. They have a lot of options coming out of it, but it, you know, it's it's just a strong lane against almost any matchup. Uh, Morgana is very strong. I'm assuming that whoever on that team plays Morgana is, you know, just very comfortable with that pick and just wanted to lock it down. But we'll see where they go from here. You know, they can run like a Graves and not have to worry about his short range because of um, the su you know support that Morgana is going to give him in fights with the Black Shield. But we'll see, you know, kind of what he's thinking. Um, Against, you know, Ezreal and uh, Sona, that's already the foundation of an AoE team. They go and switch to Lee Sin, actually. So I really like the Skarner pick here, though. That's um, pretty sh common, actually. Skarner and Morgana is a very strong matchup. Yep, he gets a Skarner coming in. He can just go straight on into the enemy team with the shield already on him. Get his pull, get everything he needs. He will not be slowed. And uh, seeing that uh, World Elite was considering the Sona... Hot yeah, I, I really gonna, like that. Yeah, they're going to be grabbing her up instead to make sure you will not be paired with the Ezreal, trying to minimize some of the poke coming on into their bot. Well, the three of them, that's a really common matchup. Having uh, Morgana, Sona, and uh, Skarner. Like, it, yeah. you, you get good support. You have lots of mobility as your team. You get to pick and choose fights. You can pick people off with Skarner very easily uh, to secure kills or Morgana. So mm -hmm. it, you kind of want to play it safe and then just go for one kill at a time um, in order to snowball yourself. But you know, it's just the foundations of a good team. Skarner's just such a strong pick, and we've seen that for a while now. But they have to be concerned with the fact that right now, World Lead Irox, they have a team that has a lot of mobility. Um, we've seen, you know, Ezreal and Lee Sin commonly used a lot together. Uh, they could go with, like, an Orianna or something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe a Leona to, you know, combo with the Ezreal in the bot lane, make them a little bit more aggressive. But we'll have to see. They could go with the Blitzcrank. That would also be pretty scary, the Ezreal Blitzcrank combo versus Sona. Yep. And uh, you got the uh, you got the Evelyn being considered there. Uh, wouldn't be too uncommon of a pick for the mid lane. We saw uh, Kedis Mialum go with it earlier today for the EU qualifier, and it will be locked in along with the Tarek to go uh, along with the Ezreal there in the bot lane. It's going to be a lot of damage coming on in if that is indeed the pick. I think it probably will be. And Morgana kind of struggles with shutting down Evelyn. Uh, once she has her ultimate, Morgana can, you know, run up and ult uh, Evelyn a little bit. You can get the snare. But for the most part, Morgana doesn't have really, like, standard harass. So Evelyn yeah. can just kind of walk in and out and, you know, free farm for most of the lane. So Messiah CN, I'm not sure who the actual player is. This is a, yeah, he's playing <laughs> well, on Messiah's do, account. Yeah, we do have, uh, we do have uh, the, we have, do actually have the full roster here. Okay. So we got Aluka, Van, Devil, Abyss, and X Real. So a uh, Van AP mid there. Yeah, but we'll we'll be able to see um, what he can do with that Evelyn pick. It will be a very strong pick. Uh, you know, he can get himself moving, and the rest of his team has the mobility. They they can shield Evelyn so that he's a little bit stronger. Yeah. Um, I don't know, so we'll, we'll just see where they're going. Graves would be strong. The only concern is that it's against Tarek now. And I, I originally thought that the Graves pick would be really nice, particularly with the Morgana. But they might want to go with someone like Corky, who has a little bit more mobility. But Graves is definitely a really strong pick. Um, he can control the waves fairly easily, and he has some mobility. And also with Corky, you do have the natural true damage. We'll get through uh, some of the extra tank. Yeah. 
that Tarek provides there for the bot lane. Well, Corky, also, yeah. Corky's great versus Evelyn in particular, but... Corky's just great. Yeah. Corky's just cool. I mean, like, look at I mean, him, he flies. I mean, anyone who flies with that much swag, I mean, how can he not be? And then Kennen going to be going up there into top lane. So what? Uh, double AP here for the Hot Pocket Survivors. And that is a lot, a lot of AOE CC here picking up for the survivors and then the last pick going to be going uh, more than likely with the Aurelia top lane to try and counter out that Kennen. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen Kennen, but Kennen Morgana it used to be a really common, um, you know, pairing. Uh, the double AP AOE is just absolutely ridiculous. Like oh, yeah. they can they can single handedly win fights. So that's going to be really dangerous for World Elite Irox. Um, Kind of the issue with Kennen is that we've seen a shift where, you know, people are playing different kind of bruisers top, people that have a little bit more initiation uh, burst damage. Kennen's harass was nerfed uh, a couple of patches in a row. So instead of being the really strong laner, Kennen, you know, kind of struggles in lane. Kennen can basically farm against anyone. It's mm -hmm. Kennen's a pretty safe lane, but um, Kennen struggles a little bit more than he used to. So people kind of forgot about how strong he is in teamfights because they just kind of think, oh, yeah, I'm not going to be able to win my lane. And right now, people like just sitting up top lane forever. They just like, you know, sitting there for the first half hour of the game and then let the rest of the team do stuff. Yeah, so I don't ever want to leave. Yeah. I but, don't um, want to leave. If he can get rolling and then leave that lane, win some team fights for his team, Kennen can be very strong. And the Aurelia is actually a really nice pick against Kennen because Aurelia can just abuse Kennen in lane. Um, you know, you, you can ignore some of Kennen's CC with the reduction that Ken, uh, Aurelia has, but then also the damage that Aurelia has. You can just dive onto him and try and kill him or force him out of lane. And on top of that, Aurelia also has quite a bit of natural sustain, whereas uh, Kennen, if he wants that, he naturally needs to build up into it. If he wants to sustain, he needs to get that revolver he needs to get his farm up but uh in aurelia you hit six you have that ultimate if you need to uh, clear waves or get some health back and you're fine you're absolutely fine and then once again we should be getting a nice little seminar second time third time many times today been getting these evelyn mid seminars so we'll see how that works and we're going to take a look at that rune page first see what we're running so lots lots holy crap holy ap batman 45, you got, the, you got the 45 per levels, you got the flat quints also, and some magic pen. Mastery's kind of afraid to look at it, but I will anyway. 2109, that's going to be a very painful eve in the mid. But a little bit, I mean, if you, yeah. can, if you can manage to, uh, you know, get the impale, get some CC on her, that's, um, there's very little defense build built on that uh, on that Eve, so it's going to be very huge glass cannon. Well, and Eve is v naturally pretty fast, but lacking some mobility or defense yeah. uh, could be kind of dangerous early on, but at, with the shield, once she hits level 6, the burst damage she's going to have is just unbelievable, so that's mm -hmm. that's going to be very dangerous. Standard stuff on uh, the Morgana, apart from the teleport mid instead of the ignite, so that's a uh, clear clear indication that Morgana is looking to just passive farm, not looking to get it's aggressive. to keep an eye on Eve. And to keep an eye on also. Eve yeah. shows up somewhere. You can teleport over there. Exactly. A little bit out of position sometimes, but, right. you know, that we'll, we'll see how that works. Well, in, in some situations, it's better late than never, but, uh, but, you know, that's relative late. Late in the fight or late as sort of after everyone's dead. I don't know. We'll have to see. But yeah, it, it, that it, is the truth. It is, it, is, it is the truth. It is the truth. But uh, Morgana with that ult, though, uh, you know, interrupting the Eve gank can be huge later on. Let's also take a look, see what Kennen's running top lane. Runes, gonna be looking there, move, you get the magic pen, you get the armor. Not too bad, Mastery's 2190, also not too terribly uncommon coming in from the Kennen. You also, eh, let's also take, uh, just for fun, a look here at the Aurelia. We got some runes, move speed. Mastery's 914.7, a nice little split, yeah. actually. The movement speed will give her some nice sticking power on Kennen um, to try and, you know, chase him down a little bit. 914.7 is kind of common on Aurelia sometimes, you, or some top laners, you just want to get a mix of everything. Mm. But uh, we'll see, you know, what they can do there. Did you, did Kennen have AD? No. No? Okay. No, this is not an AD Kennen. But, but did he, what, what was it again? It was movement speed and just defense? Uh, movement speed and some, yeah, movement speed and defense. Okay. He has a magic pen, but no AP to actually go up with it. Okay. Yeah, a, a yeah. lot of times you would see AD Kennen, not just, you know, just to be a little bit stronger yeah. in lane. Or even high. But, um, yeah, that's kind of hop down a little bit. Well, usually you start AD and then transition into the AP build. But, um, I don't know, just going to be going kind of defensively. We'll see how they uh, how they progress there. But, uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll definitely check out, you know, what's what's going to happen in that top lane. I, I think it's going to be interesting to see how what Skarner's role can be in this game. 
Because if Skarner could get some early ganks off into Evelyn, uh, they could really shut down oh, Evelyn early. Yeah. And, you know, as we saw earlier on Evelyn's uh, runes and masteries, no, no defense properties whatsoever. Nothing in the defense tree. No armor, magic resist, or anything, actually, uh, on the runes either. So you get you, it, it could be a very big problem if you manage to land that one bind. Skarner comes in. But... Uh, well, like, it's, like we mentioned before, though, Morgana's not really looking to play uh, offensive. There is no Ignite, but uh, that with doesn't mean she can't also still dish out a little bit of damage with uh, some support from Skarner. Well, yeah, with our, either the Skarner ultimate or the Morgana ultimate, they have plenty of damage to take down Evelyn. So yeah. if they can just chain their CCs, uh, they'll be able to drop Messiah, you know, who's actually someone else. Um, <laughs> And, you know, go from there. Yep. So I will call him Messiah all match that because that is the name I'm, there. I'm and trying, you, it I'm, will help you guys. Like mentally, I'm trying to just see, not going to be uh, trying to use the the screen names uh, as much as I do. But I'm sure I mean, it's well, going to who, happen. Who did you say it is? Uh, we got the entire roster up here. So, uh, so Aluka, it's Vaughn, Aluka in the top. Van. Uh, Van, and, uh, Van on the AP. Devil on AD. Uh, Abyss on support and X real in the jungle. But uh, as we said this, uh, before, if you are just joining us now, uh, you know this is uh, World Elite Irox versus the Hot Pockets Fires. This is the uh, World Elite B team. But uh, in order to play in the NA qualifier, in order to play on the server, they've had to uh, they've had to borrow the accounts from the A team. I just realized you know, it's eight. Yeah, da, da, da. Okay. Um, yeah, they had to borrow uh, some of the accounts from their uh, from their fellow teammates to play in this qualifier. Yeah, so we'll we'll see. Um, I you know the AOE team for Hot Pockets is very strong. Like they have a very strong, just kind of standard team. Um, you know, so it'll be kind of interesting to see. But it, if uh, World Elite IROX can get off to a good start, then their Bruiser team can just like steamroll anyone. Like if they yeah. get tanky enough where the AOE doesn't kill them, then Aurelia can just dive in, Lee Sin follow up with a shield, you know, Evelyn be diving into the middle of the team, and they'll they'll really quickly just overrun them. So, um, you know, that's going to be the concern. Is it's it's kind of it's the Bruiser team versus you know the AOE team, and mm -hmm. uh, so the AOE team they're they're going to want. Uh, Hot Pockets on the left there, they're going to want this team to be kind of a low, This they want this game to be a low scoring game. Mm -hmm. They want to just sit back, kind of, you know, farm in lane, not really force too many fights, but all the fights that they do, they want to just take one or two kills and then get out. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, slowly gain an advantage until they uh, win a major team fight in the mid game. So that, you know, if, if there's a large number of early kills, that'll probably benefit um, World Elite IROX. They'll be able to snowball with that. Yep. And uh, we've seen before, you know, how well uh, you know, a champ like, you know, Eve, you get the kills on there, you get the farm, the damage is just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Lee Sin, you know, that's, uh, that's pretty much like standard part, of course. Uh, Lee Sin, once he gets farm, he does very well. Uh, Aurelia, Aurelia, you get some farm on her, just becomes an absolute, like, immovable tank. You get, you know, G, early GA on her, she ain't going nowhere. And then, uh, well, Ezreal farmed, I and mean, we've seen many times before yeah. how dangerous it can be to have a farmed Ezreal. Yeah, no, Ezreal should be really safe in that bottom lane, and, you know, a lot of times Ezreal can try and snowball a lane, but mm -hmm. we'll see. I, You know, I don't know whether or not they're used to the ping, and I, I think they yeah, they probably are. Most Asian teams start off playing on the NA server. Yep. Um, you know, a couple of them, they do have their own accounts, but it kind of makes me wonder, the, the two that are borrowing accounts, uh, you know, whether if they haven't been playing on this NA server, um, if that's going to kind of throw them for a loop, if they won't be used to it, if they're going to be able to handle it. And we, we saw, uh, too, um, during the qualifier number three, uh, that's where we first saw uh, IG actually playing our qualifiers, qualifiers also. It didn't seem to affect them too much. Uh, it could also just be... Well, they were all playing on the NA server all the time, though. They were, and you know, they've had a little bit more experience. But there were a few instances uh, I can remember uh, going, uh, doing some jungle invades yeah. for some smite steals where the ping could have made a difference in things like timing. But uh, there's quite minuscule. And other than that, though, they performed rather well. But that is, again, they spent a lot of time on the NA server. is something they've, they're used to. Uh, and... Like we said before about Irox, I mean, these are relative unknowns to us, so we're not quite sure about their uh, experiences here and there, but we're about to find out. All the Hot Pocket survivors camping out, this bot tri oh, they're gonna walk into them. expecting the invade. They may very well walk into it, but you do have Tarek actually leading the charge on into enemy red buff. 
pings going down. They're continuing. And nice conga line going, dude. This is like perfect. Hot, Hot Pockets did see them walk past with their ward, so they yes. had the vision up there. The only concern is right now they don't know where they're standing, and the level one for World Elite Irox is yeah. so powerful that if they were standing in the bush by red and Hot Pockets were to try and you know run in there and clash with them, they could almost instantly die. So they need to be really careful with it. Uh, when they lead as a team, they need Skarner to lead the front, and they need to just aggressively go in for it around the 155 mark when the red spawns and just hope that someone's recalled because it is likely that someone would recall to try and get into that top lane um you know aurelia yep. and they can try and overrun them i mean this could be <laughs> absolutely huge this could decide the game right here you got irox peeking on into the small golems you're gonna realize they're not there and then as the red buff spawns you're gonna see them start on it straight away and then here we go here comes Cannon Street leading the charge. There's a 3v5 right out in front of the red buff. And first blood going to the Skarner. Everyone gonna assist on that one. Terra going down very quickly. And the red buff will be secured. No smite steal from the Lee Sin. <laughs> Jane gonna be fine. Continuing normal path. And Irox already have given up the first blood. Spent a lot of time on that invade. And Ezreal going to be returning to lane, already drinking a potion, already somewhat weak. Yeah, that was a great situation, uh, particularly how the kills lined up, because Tarek went down, but Ezreal also got low, and that means that Graves and Sona are going to be able to bully him around a little bit. Yep. So not only does Skarner have an early advantage in the jungle, he's going to be able to you know, be really fast. He's going to get um, early mobility boots or early gold pretends or something like that. That's going to allow him to put a lot more pressure on Evelyn in the mid lane. However, it also means that bot lane, they have a little bit more control down there, so that'll be really strong. And Skarner already... Oh moving right in. The bind does not hit on Messiah, but he's still going to get some nice damage, and that's going to force him out of the lane uh, and make him really vulnerable here. Yeah, got the Lee Sin going for more damage. Jane forced to flash out of there, got a little bit too far in. Oh, he's going to get the kill. Got caught in the pool, taking quite a bit of damage, but the shield from Lee Sin going to be more than enough to keep things relevant. Meanwhile, we talked about the harass down onto Ezreal. He was entering lane already pretty weak. He's not even level two yet, and already he's just struggling to keep above 200 health here in bot lane. Yeah, and the only one that's at a disadvantage for Hot Pockets right now is Kennen. Kennen missed a little bit of time in the top lane. Not that significant, though. Mm. Um, it just, you know, it's a slight advantage for Aurelia. But, you know, he should be okay. He should be able to range farm. And he, he wasn't really expecting to win that lane anyway until, you know, he gets some jungle pressure. So we'll see how um, that kind of impacts him. But, you know, Hot Pockets is in a great situation right now. It, it's not, you know, that big of a lead, though. So World Elite, you know, they're, they're still in a pretty even situation. Their lanes are all fairly evil, even. The bot lane, though they had a slight disadvantage, there's not really any um, serious swing there. So it's it really is an even laning phase. Yeah, and for the time being, uh, Aurelia is winning up on farm uh, over Kennen pretty hardcore. But it's still a little bit too early to say. Given another level or two, get some, uh, get, get, get some farm. He needs to build up all his abilities to get to the point where he can range. Oh, so Morgana mid. Lee Sin's jumping on to her. You got the shield. Cannot prevent against everything, especially not physical damage. Bind backwards does catch the Lee Sin. But uh, Morgana is still very weak here in this mid lane. And that's quite a bit of damage. That's awful timing uh, for that gank as far as Morgana is concerned because the super, the cannon minions coming up. And that's the key point to try and, um, you know, back off. And uh, it, she needs to wait until that cannon minion's down basically in order to retreat because otherwise she's going to miss out on a lot of experience and a lot of farm. Uh, so she does get that. So it, it does open up an opportunity for Morgana to, uh, to go back now. Lee Sin camping up top lane, waiting for an opportunity here on Kennen who's uh, still playing rather defensive. Meanwhile, the bot lane of Hot Pockets still looking to push here, looking to press the advantage that they had earlier on. But uh, as time goes on, you notice too that uh, Graves and Ezreal actually now even in farm is an opportunity to catch up. There is still the uh, one assist on the Graves, but uh, at this point, the lead that they've uh, gotten is pretty minimal. But you do still have a little bit of an experience lead on Graves, but nothing too huge to write home about. I'm a little bit surprised that Morgana's not going back because she had been able to push into the tower. I guess Evelyn's actually kind of low, and the health pot, uh, health pots, Tea Time Korea has been able to get himself back even in that lane. So he, he yeah. wants to keep on the pressure on Evelyn, but Lee Sin making his way up top for Kennen. Kennen's in a really vulnerable situation. If Kalmay can get in on the uh, onto him, um, it'll be pretty tough for Kennen to escape. He's waiting for Kennen to, com uh, to keep uh, pushing out the lane further. As he's looking to try and press it to tower, 
Leeson laying in wait, waiting for his opportunity, but Kennan actually retreating the long way around, going through the brush. I think it's a bit of a, an opportunity lost there in the path on the uh, yeah. in terms of Leeson. So he's now returning to the jungle, recognizing that the opportunity is now gone. I think Leeson was a little bit scared to press it because of all the minions that Aurelia would have to go for uh, through. Mm -hmm. So she'd kind of get caught on the minions. She'd be diving through a large minion wave that would you know deal a lot of damage. Um, so instead of going for it, he's kind of playing defensively. But I, I think they could have pressured Kennan a little bit there. But you know it, it'll allow Calme to be comfortable in the top lane and just continue to farm. You got Sona with the power cord getting more harassed down on Ezreal. So Tarek's got his uh, work out uh, work set out for him when it comes to the healing. Morgana has finally backed double Doran's rings plus a ward plus some potions. Uh, but you did have more, uh, Evelyn go back also. You got, you got the lucky pick, you got the GP10, looking to keep the income pretty high. And when you're already winning in terms of creeps, already 15 plus, and you're going to have added income from the lucky pick, that's going to be good for her later on. Yeah, that's going to be brutal to see how Evelyn's getting an early advantage. Okay, G, Jane coming in on Kelme, but Evelyn's actually coming up top as well, so they might be baiting themselves into a dangerous situation because Evelyn is going to be in the perfect Ultimate position to maybe pick up a kill here. Ultimate is up on Eve, finds out the Skarner, doesn't use it yet. There you go, lots of damage down the Skarner. In addition to the Ignite, Her Derbster uh, does get to back to the tower in time, and Skarner forced to flash out of that bad spot, does not want to pass off, a, a pass off any buffs or any advantage to the even mid. You got Tarek with the stun down onto the stun and not quite six yet. Does not have the ult available. Graves left behind just to watch his support fall and now he's got a long way back to his own tower. Will actually be fine though. Leeson actually backing off. Yeah, they're fortunate they only lost Sona there because yeah. it was actually pretty poor positioning uh, from Graves and Sona in that situation. So Tarek was just running right past Graves to, um, you know, attack Sona. Graves at the time, he was trying to get some damage on the turret because he saw Ezreal's kind of low. All right, I can, you know, push, get some damage here. And instead, when the, uh, the support's running at you, you need to get your shots on the support and then just kind of back off as you go. And uh, Sona needed to back off as well. Instead, they were out of position. Um, so, you know, it's just it was just kind of unusual to see Tarek get on the other side of Graves there. But um, I don't know, we'll see if it kind of snowballs that lane. That's kind of a dangerous situation to give up Ezreal any early kills. But right now, Graves does have a nice farm advantage over Ezreal. The, the pushing into the tower has generally been successful. Eve ha uh, has been past the blue buff, but also pla uh, past a ward in the middle of the river while still visible. So the uh, Hot Pocket survivors did have an inkling that she's going to be going in for uh, you know, going in for an invade, trying to steal the rates of something. So they had a, a good idea where she was going to be. So preventing those steals and forcing her back into mid lane. But not to say that you can't also go back for your own rates when you do spawn. Another ward actually going to spot. I, I don't Eve. know. It's very close. It might not have seen her. It's uh, it's very close to have see, uh, seen her because she when you use your abilities on Eve you go visible for a couple of seconds mm. but um, I think she might have hit invisibility before them because they didn't ping her off I think they should have seen her but I, I I don't know if they did or not because they haven't pinged her and it doesn't look like Herp Derpster is uh, any the wiser he didn't move until Lee Sin actually came into vision. Yep. So we'll see. We will see. We got Eve actually now running past through. I think that time they may have seen. Well, now they're definitely going to see her coming back in. There you go. Yeah, she just hit the vision proc um, right at the end there. Graves wow. gets the quick kill onto Ezreal. Lots that is damage. huge. I mean, if, if they can snowball their AD, that's definitely a good situation for them. Plenty of damage still on that Graves. And Ezreal not in the best of spots at the moment. But uh, I think he may have actually have Kate after that for a second. I was just like, well, you're just smacking Yeah, he looks minion. like he's DC'd. Because there's also, there's a large minion wave there that he's going to want to push into the tower. And so you look at the situation, yeah, he's not going to die. He's not, you know, taking that much damage. He is taking a little bit of damage. Yeah. But he want, right now, Graves really, after that kill, wants to just kill this wave as fast as possible so that the creeps are all denied at the tower. And he's not getting the opportunity right now. So, um, you know, he will just figure out what's going on real quick. But uh, that'll definitely be, you know, good if they can get him going. But so far, the biggest concern for Hot Pockets is Morgana isn't putting a lot of pressure on mid. And that was kind of a concern going in that Morgana doesn't have a very effective, um, you know, straightforward harass. Uh, to you know shut down evelyn but so far morgana is losing farm to evelyn and evelyn is roaming constantly evelyn's yeah. just you know free to roam around the map so really what morgana needs to do is be get wards around the mid they have that already so you know morgana should be safe from lee sen but then constantly push uh, evelyn into the tower or zoner and try and kill her like those are the two options but you need some way of keeping vision if you push evelyn into the tower if you push the waves into the tower evelyn's going to fall behind farm 
or you're going to see her because she's going to need to sit in lane or you're going to get damage on the tower. Any three of those situations is a good thing. Um, or if you try and zone Evelyn, if you run up to Evelyn's ranged minions, then you know, you're know you between Evelyn and your minions. Evelyn will have to show herself to you in order to farm and then you alter and you try and get a kill with Skarner and try and set that up. But right now Morgana's playing kind of passively and that passive play is allowing Evelyn to just roam around the map freely. Cool. Good. Issue with Graves fixed. He can move again. He is free from the grasps of the ground, keeping him still, keeping him from uh, really uh, getting any further than just uh, past the kill. And I'm sure there must be some like, collision detection or something when he went for that kill on Ezra, but it's okay. We got it. We're settled now. And with that, uh, we got to get the uh, something passed on over to uh, Morgana here. Is the blue buff up and ready to go? Get the vision. Yes, yeah. it is. The, the blue is definitely going to help Morgana a little bit, but kind of a missed timing. She's sitting around missing the wave into the, her tower. She really needed yeah. to kill the wave before going for the blue because uh, Skarner wasn't even there yet. So that timing, um, you know, it, it kind of is a, you know, mistake on Morgana's part again. But uh, we'll see Messiah or, or whoever is playing on Messiah's account. Uh, okay. Van is actually, you know, going to be starting to to steal the race. That's going to help boost his uh, farming as well. Um, and, you know, we'll see how he roams. But Skarner is sitting mid, wants to start putting pressure on Evelyn. Pinged out as he's going up to try ramp, so you know he's not too far away, but just going to shield on up, see where he goes from here. He may just be getting a better vantage point coming in around. He may also consider going down bot because it looks like uh, Ezreal and Tarek are getting a little bit, a uh, little bit edgy. They feel that they can uh, push out, but Sona with all that poke and, <laughs> and the power cord, uh, with all that chunk coming in from Graves, going to send him right on back. And you see Morgana and Skarner actually going in from behind the lane. They're going to be waiting for the minion wave to push up. Oh, this is a but great decision. The but there you go. You got the impale going down on attack. Post Ezreal kill, two quick ones. Very well coordinated. Oh, Lee Sin's going up top, though, so they get the kills bottom, but Kennen's in a dangerous spot. The Q from Lee Sin, he gets the ultimate, oh, the kickback, but wow. diving right back onto him, gets the flash. He just barely gets that slow. That slow from Lee Sin just hardly nicked Kennen as he hit the flash away. Very Otherwise, nice. he might have been able to retreat. But yeah. um, even so, nice play from Hot Pockets getting the kills down bottom, and Graves and Sun are doing a great job so far, and Morgana and Skarner coming in for the kills. That's definitely yeah. huge to try and snowball that lane. Yeah, but even after that turn of events, though, and that is still plus a dragon, plus one kill for Hot Pockets, and they also did not, well, they may, are they going to lose top tower off this, though? No, it's actually still near full, so Aureli's going to get some damage on it, be able to take it out but uh, if Kennen dies once more then more than likely it will fall well Kennen's just in a tough situation yeah. it really is a tough matchup for Kennen um, you know and Kennen right now falling drastically behind in farm uh, really has just been able to free farm uh, Eve as well is you know basically free farming but the concern is going to be after that kill after all that gold now that uh, Kame gets to go back to uh, to base he's going to be really close to finishing up a wits end if not actually already finishing it he, uh, he actually should have it if he decides um, to go get it but uh, uh, no, no getting the zeal Trinity, actually so, yeah so having that movement speed versus Kennen, um, you know, it will allow him to chase down Kennen a little bit more aggressively. Just any sort of damage items. Uh, now it's it's in a dangerous situation where if Aurelia gets that phage proc, he could maybe chase down Kennen down for a kill, and Kennen's gonna you know fall further and further behind in lane as a result. Leeson looking for a steal on the small golems. It looks like he's gonna be able to get it too. And afterwards, he may want to make a, uh, a visit and give uh, give Hot Pocket some of their own medicine coming from behind tower. Give a quick boot to the head to somebody and send them backwards. But Eve. Sending on, uh, going on down uh, to the bot lane, pinging out over by the red buff. Does see the Skarner come into the bush? DFG quite a bit of damage onto it. Does get the appeal backwards, but Lisa is not too far behind. Ezreal ult also just for the insurance if necessary. And now Hot Pockets, they're getting, they are definitely getting some of their own medicine. You got all, nearly all of Irox here surrounding you. This is the wise decision. Go back. Yeah, nice play, um, taking control of that jungle. And that's, you know, the struggle with Evelyn is you, you kind of never know where she is. So uh, Skarner getting caught out of position. Um, I don't know, they're fortunate that they didn't go for a tower dive bot, but the yeah. minion wave being forced off the towers, it was kind of difficult for them. And Morgana teleporting up top, maybe, or teleporting to the wave, wow. coming down the mid lane, but teleports down the lane, gets the bind on the Sunflower. Wow. He is going to go down. Crazy. So, yeah, kind of an interesting teleport, but, it uh, yeah, it worked out for them. Hey, if, if, it, if you use a teleport and you get a kill, 
So that's a good teleport, period. That's why Doesn't I was... matter how far away it is. I was wondering why Sona would ult and Morgana would teleport away, but uh, Morgana was just slightly out of range, and they, they knew that they had a ward up in the tri-bush, so they were concerned that Morgana wouldn't be able to get in range for that kill. So they just kind of set it up with the TP. Very well, very well organized there from Hot Pockets Drivers. However, as we mentioned before, Kennen is not having the best of times here top lane. I really getting free damage on the tower, but you know what? With uh, with those kill down bot, you could get some damage here on the bot tier one, but Ezreal ult all the way down the lane. Gonna keep everything pushed out, and both Graves and Sona are practically out of mana, so they are gonna have to back. They're gonna have to recover after that one. Yeah, at least Sin sitting up in the top lane as well. This is going to be really dangerous for Herb Derpster. He's going to be able to get off his ultimate, and that'll help him uh, against Skarner. this tower dive. Uh, Skarner as well is going to be a huge help since they did, you know, ping off the Lee Sin coming up in the top lane. But um, they are fairly tanky. They're tanky enough that they could tower dive if it is a 2v1 matchup. Yeah, both teams recognizing that uh, something may definitely go down top lane very soon. You saw Morgana and Eve actually start to wander on up. And then when they both realized that they were both going up there, they both backed off. Lee Sin is actually back to his regular jungle route. So uh, if Aurelia decides to go in on this, gonna find out very quick that you are outnumbered. Skarner laying in wait there in top lane when Aurelia decides to get aggressive, then does decide back off. Blue has actually respawned, so you may want to pass it off to Morgana pretty quickly. Yeah, it's a nice job by Kennen getting some harass on the Kalmay. Um, you know, he does have the ultimate to heal up a little bit, but Kennen recognizing while Aurelia in order to exchange damage needs to be incredibly aggressive. So having Skarner for the backup takes the free harass, knowing that if Kennen or if Aurelia dives on him, then Skarner's gonna be right there for the return. And now it is a 2v2, the Kennen ultimate, and Aurelia with the ignite, so it doesn't actually get to use the ultimate to its pure effectiveness, but diving onto the Kennen, trying to pick nice. up the kill, does go down. If Kennen can retreat, she cannot. So the issue is will they pick up the kill on the Lee Sin? No. Because Morgana is walking right into a death trap of Messiah. The ultimate goes off, but it doesn't oh, matter. Evelyn wow. picks up the kill anyway. Yeah, could have uh, definitely used that ult just a little bit sooner on that one. Could have kept the uh, cannon alive, but all things considered, things are also still going very well down here in the bot lane. Still getting some, quite a bit of aggression down onto the Ezreal and onto Tarek and free damage onto the turret also. Buckshot whenever you can. Keep the weakness going. Keep the keep keep the health low as much as you can. But Skarner looking, choosing to defend the tier one here in top, could find himself in a very bad spot if the wave does decide to push up. You did see the things go down. No, Sona all completely whiffing. Unfortunately, you got the shift out from Ezreal to avoid being in a dancing frenzy. Delirium still with poke down in the queue, getting some heal on the graves as the push continues. More, well, you got the ultimate once again from Ezreal to push the lane, give him some room. So he can back, get back that mana, also buy himself something nice. How much gold has he got on him? He can uh, he can build up uh, one more piece of the Trinity, or he can also just buy a BF sword straight away. So he's going to be needing some of that damage, and tier one in bot does finally fall. Yeah, that is, that is actually becoming more and more common to start off with the Phage and then transition into the BF sword. Uh, so you have a little bit more you know sustained damage versus some of those tanky champs. Some people like Skarner in this game. Uh, Ezreal's going to need a little bit more damage than the Triforce would give him, but the Phage is also incredibly strong in lane. Um, so we'll, you know. We'll see how that works. Graves has been doing a really nice job so far. Same thing with Sona with the harass in that bottom lane. But, you know, Evelyn is just going to be such a monster. It's going to be really scary. And talk about champions that aren't really reliant on ping. You know, if, if they're dealing with the ping issues since they're uh, playing from China, Evelyn, you just spam Q. You just run around and you just smash on your keyboard and you automatically target people. It's also true. Yeah, it is also true. And then again, you do have like some skill shot champs like Ezreal and Leeson, but then again, that's not too reliant. It's like, well, oh, is Morgana gonna get Tarek? I think she is the bind, oh, the nice flash, flash from Tarek. Out, very well done. But Ezreal's still also. Uh, they all went around. They He's all, gonna like, get out. They will. Yeah, that's right. They did all go, huh? And even then, while that's going on here, also take a look here at the top lane, Ezreal ult. What did he get? I don't think he got a whole lot with that. Just a little bit of vision beside though. Gonna be finding a present in the tri brush. DFG down to Kenneth, not even a problem. You got the ward hop from Lee Sin, looking to continue the pursuit on the stone to make sure she does not get any more vision to force her back out. Yeah, and there's, it's, there's, there's giving up the top tier too. It's even in gold right now, but this game is really close to snowballing in World Elite's favor. Uh, so there's a 1k gold advantage now, but it, it was even in gold. But now Aurelia is going to split push top lane the entire game. No one can lane against Aurelia at this point. Aurelia will beat whoever lanes against her. They can only beat her as a team. 
that means that uh, as long as Aurelia gets good ward coverage over by the blue, she can just sit there and control that lane the entire game and put a lot of pressure on the map onto Hot Pockets. And that's going to pull them, you know, all over the place and put them in a dangerous spot. Then you consider Evelyn, how strong Evelyn is. You know, Ezreal, even though he's a little bit behind in the bottom lane, he's still doing a pretty good job. So it's it's just going to be a big struggle for them. So now, uh, now you got Eve looking to roam a little bit more. And also, oh, you got some stuns going down onto Sona just to annoy. You do have the Oracles picked up by Skarner. Going to be clearing off some of that coverage. Going to make things slightly safer. Blind Q from Lee from the blind man, almost grabbing his mark, actually. But uh, the Skarner will continue on. Keep the ward sweep going. Graves continuing to farm. Kennen looking at the shambles of his lane. Just going to be struggling to farm the moment Aurelia comes back in. Wow, that was actually really quick. But that's what Evelyn does. Quick kill down bot lane onto the Graves with some help from the Eve. Yeah, the insta-kill potential from uh, Evelyn is just so great at this point. Um, as long as Aurelia just split pushes the top lane, it prevents uh, Hot Pockets from being able to group and take objectives. So Hot Pockets doesn't really have much to do other than sit in lane, but that's going to allow Evelyn to just roam around the map and look for kills all over the place. And um, it's going to be tough. To shut her down, they really need to group as a team, but there's oh, at this point, there's not much for them to do as a team. Cannon cannot even escape using that surge has to use the ult even if he just wants to get out and will actually the ignite take him out it will aurelia such a beast here and now gonna be putting some damage down onto the tier three in top lane doesn't even care doesn't even need to be with the rest of the team yeah it's uh it really is putting a lot of pressure on them so as a result world elite irox they're gonna be able to push very aggressively now they're gonna be able to take objectives all around the map because they're starting to gain complete map control and uh you know it's it's gonna be tough for them jane does have that oracle so that does help if he can get in range of uh evelyn try and pick off some evelyn kills but um you know even so evelyn has the mobility where she's generally pretty safe yeah i look at that speed buff and actually uh, you know you know, speed buff, that's uh, your max. You were looking to max it out last on Eve, but... Uh, it depends. A, a lot. Usually you'll max it second. It, some Eves max it last, uh, some Eves max it second. It really depends on your play style. Yeah. But, I mean, you get a little bit more damage from the E, which is why he's going for the E, but... Right. E's, it, is, it is AP yeah, Eve. Well, the E, too. the Q is AP, but the E is physical damage. Is, is it? It scales off of your physical it does, damage. It scales off both. Oh, it scales off both. It scales okay. off both. Yeah, but uh, so a lot of times you'll uh, you'll max the W for the movement speed, but it's it's really uh, it, it depends on the Eve player. Oh, Graves! What? Wow, it's like not even it's half a second, and you see the cackle coming in from Eve following that kill, and yeah, it's not that big of a deal. Just DFG ult and a smack, and you're done. Yeah, this deal that's all you need. You you got the abyssal, you got the DFG, and you got short pen boots. That's it. How much? How much MR? That's true damage. Eve's doing true damage to Graves. Yeah. Period. No, it's. I mean, that's. Yeah. You know, it's that's brutal. And if Eve gets a haunting guys, it, you know, it's just going to exacerbate the issue. Um, not against Graves. You know, the the true damage, the way that the damage calculations work. Uh, haunting guys. Um, I don't remember if haunting guys takes off before or after abyssal scepter because abyssal can actually take you to negative, but haunting guys and spell pen boots can't. And I I think they do their calculations first, but. Um, yeah. I know. Regardless, it's it's a you know tough situation, and he can't really get defensive items yet. He'll probably have to buy a Negatron cloak right now, but that's going to reduce some of his damage output. I would like to think of these situations that does give you mega fast just speed. MPL going down on it to Eve. Fun, fortunate face check right in the middle of which was actually sticking around longer than I think even. That he was expected. three ultimates to take him down though, and yeah. even so, Evelyn almost picked up the kill onto Morgana. Like without one of those ultimates, that might have been a kill on Morgana. Absolutely. If there's one more member of Irox actually there in the bush checking. That could have actually been a very Game different fight, too. But with all of that distraction, you do have as taking down the bot tier one. A little bit more gold for Irox, extending it to a 4k lead here onto the 24th minute. And uh, Aurelia ducking in and out, Ward in the brush, now decides to back off, recognizing I do not want to run into a 4v5. Granted, you are still in the gold lead. You don't want to be uh, making any unnecessary sacrifices at this point. You do not want to throw anything. 
Yeah, and they are chasing down Aurelia right now as a team. Lee Sin trying to slow He's them back. down a bit. The bind does hit onto Cal May, but he is very tanky. I don't know if they can kill him as a team unless Skarner can get in range. So he's just kiting around for the moment, but they do have him, so they're going to be able to pick him up. Lee Sin actually jumping in as well. And this is a terrible fight for Woodley, Irox, and the ultimate from Kennen. They do pick up Tarek as well, trying to chase down Sunfire Land. Wow. But Lee Sin, he jumps in the backside, picks up Herp Derpster, and then walks out. But this is all killing time because Eve is now back here, coming back from death. And back up and keep him dissuaded, but uh, I think the damage is going to be more enough. He got the double kill on to East Carter, trying to make something happen, but he's no, going to get Morgana too. Oh, or Sona. Sona, no, will actually be able to get out of there. But that's all that was. That was killing time for Eve to come to resurrect and come back to the fight from base. And it worked. It worked beautifully. Yeah, they, they need to just get the whole team to group up and then just insta-kill them with their AOE, basically. Um, or, you know, pick off individual members with Skarner, but they, they can't afford to have fights where they waste all their ultimates on a champion and then continue to fight. They need to retreat after that. So they, you know, pick off one or two kills and then retreat because Morgana with her ultimate down, if you're not going to hit the bind, almost worthless. You know, Sona doesn't add a lot of damage. Uh, Skarder adds a decent amount of damage. Kennen loses a lot of damage with the ultimate as well. So that means that a lot of it's going on the Graves, and Graves just isn't enough to take down Evelyn and all these champions right now. And you're seeing very uh, all these fights, Evelyn is focusing down. You know, Graves is one of the primary targets because you, take, you get rid of the Graves, you get rid of the damage. Plain is simple. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll see if they can, you know, pressure uh, Evelyn some, but uh, the AD, considering how safe Ezreal's going to be from their AoE, Graves is always going to be under pressure. That's going to be kind of a concern for them because uh, Ezreal is just naturally going to last a little bit longer. And Aurelia waiting in the bush, Los Panderos walking right into him does die. The bind does hit, and he might go down. I don't know if they have enough damage to take him down, though, without uh, Graves. He's going to be able to get out of there. Flash over the wall, completely evading the Sona ult and a nice shuriken well timed unfortunately uh, eve just running right into the thing but uh the, the advantage has been given graves is gonna be down for still a little while longer and uh, irox are they gonna be going towards baron or they may just be warning it they may just be clearing it i don't think they're gonna be starting on this oh nope, they're no, doing they it are just gonna three man it at this point but like, you got eve you, you just you have aurelia pushing down bot it's like oh aurelia's not with the team they can't possibly be doing baron right now but actually they are and here comes the rest of the hot pocket survivors trying to make something happen sona ult is down skarner ult is down uh, sona is down period actually he does really quick once again those kills from eve so fast you got Lee Sin continuing on in the fight, traveling the long way with the Q. He does get the kick back down on the Skarner, but Morgana flies in with the ult. Yeah, can to follow up with his ult too. But here comes Ezreal looking for more damage. A shutdown from Graves, Dome down on to Evelyn. Exhaust down on Graves. Flash over the wall, Ez in pursuit, double kill. Kennen in back, stun from Tarek, keeping him behind. Is this damage gonna be enough? Yes, triple for Ezreal, and Aurelia didn't even need to be there. Oh, I think Ezreal might be going for Morgana. No, I was wondering if he would actually uh, arcane shift over the wall to try and take her down. But uh, yeah, it's just Graves, he wasn't behind his team. He had to come in from the side because he was late to the fight. They started the fight without him, which is just, you know, a no-no, because they, they didn't have enough damage. It's rude, actually. Yeah, so they, you know, they started a fight without their main source of damage, and then he came in. He was in a vulnerable position. Ezra was able to take him down. So um, I don't know. It's just it's a dangerous spot. They really they yeah. need a lot more damage than they have right now. They Graves is just such a key piece of their team, but they have there's several assassins on uh, World Elite Irox, and as a result, they're just able to bully around Graves. And that's also the confidence from Irox too. Is like four. You know, we don't have Aurelia. No problem. We can still take this fight. Even if we don't take this fight, Aurelia can just keep on uh, continuing the push. Because even if we don't win, they're going to be low and they will not be able to counteract the push Aurelia is providing. Yeah, so we'll, we'll uh, have to see if they can pressure this Baron now. Kelme will be able to pick up that blue. Pass it over to Messiah. Um, he might actually hold it on himself, but nope, Messiah is going to hold on to it. But, uh, you know, they, they can take the dragon or the Baron fairly easily. Like, they won't lose a lot of health doing it. But for the most part, they just want to force a fight. So they, they can use the Baron as a means of baiting a fight. But uh, I really actually like what a Hot Shot's doing right now, or Hot Pockets is doing right now, because they, they want to make sure, they want to try and make some plays. So they're staying together as a team. They want to try and pick people off, because that's really the only way they're going to come back into this game. Yeah, and if they can snag up uh, Evelyn like they did before on that unfortunate uh, bush check, that could leave them enough time to grab the Baron, stall the game a little while longer, and have them get their farm back up. 
but you do got Eve still looking to take more objectives. I believe they got a little bit of vision on her uh, as she's going for the Wraiths, doubling on back. Hot Pocket Survivor is looking to push back up on the mid lane, making sure that the Baron is being attempted. Can't just go, you know, they'll, they'll be able to uh, go through the forest relatively undetected, at least from the lane. But there you go. You see the Tarek looking for the Impale, was not able to close the gap after Australia's pop, but he's still out in front. But Evelyn from behind does get caught out. Ezra with the ult, not gonna be able to get the damage needed to get the kill they wanted onto Graves, but there's still a very real threat here. They've lost a 4v5 before. It they need to retreat. Again. They're doing perfectly right now. They got Lee Sin right on in, does get a small slow. Tarek, who's gonna get the stun? He throws down the ultimate. Kennen out in front though. Is his ultimate up? Yes, it is. Lee Sin goes down in the face of Soda and Graves. There's still a mid tower up, but they don't care. They still got plenty of tank on them. Aurelia going for the surge, takes out the Morgana, so the last one up, that is an Oracle's gone, double kill on Aurelia, and that is the ace for World Elite Irox. Yeah, and Evelyn was just trying to slow them down for the team to get in. You know, Evelyn got off some nice damage, burned a bunch of the ultimates, but the rest of the team easily had enough damage to take them down, which is why Hot Pockets, they knew right after that kill, rather than going for more kills, they needed to retreat. They tried to, but they just couldn't get out of there fast enough. Uh, so, you know, they weren't quite able to get out in time. Aurelia is just way too strong at this point. Aurelia can just easily bully them around, and now they're going to be able to take this Baron down. You know, it's going to drop fairly quickly. Ezreal has enough damage for it. Ezreal actually probably needs to get into a little bit tanking but it seems like Aurelia is okay at the time but um Oh, just brutal fight, and they they did a good job of keeping Graves alive long enough. They had enough CC to protect them in the back line, but mm -hmm. even so, they just didn't have enough damage to take down uh, the likes of Aurelia. So now the Baron buff is it on everyone? I believe so. Everyone was up in time to grab the benefits of the Baron going down the region. Aurelia doesn't need to back, just gonna stick it out here in top lane. Continue the push, continue the split as what you've been doing pretty much the entire game. It can also, uh, you, got, you got enough gold on you too? Yeah, you got plenty. Can go back to base anytime, pick up the Guardian Angel, and it's gonna be that much more of an unfortunate mess for Hot Pocket to deal with while not only, you know, in addition to the Baron buff, you also got extra lives to so deal with that. Yeah, it's it's going to be brutal. I mean, the the regen they're already too tanky for uh, hot pockets to take down. So in the really long fights, if they even if they do some damage onto World Elite Irox, they're just going to regen a lot of it. So it's going to be you know kind of difficult for them to take these uh, members down already. Um, Aurelia just finishing the GA as well. So already had a lot of armor, but Aurelia is already almost unkillable. I you know I don't know if they could kill her a second time. <laughs> so you know we'll we'll yeah. see. I mean it's it really it's all down to Graves and. And he's just not strong enough at this point. He did pretty well earlier in the game, but he wasn't able to keep up his farm as much as he could have, and he's just he just doesn't have enough damage. Yeah, and considering that he is the most farmed on the on the uh, on the hot pocket survivor side, uh, with nearly hitting 10k, uh, but you look over at World Elite, 12k, 12k, 13k on the main damage dealers and tanks. It is just. And it's the team yeah. gold. It's team gold advantages, uh, some farming advantages, you know, throughout their teams. You, you know, you see they're hitting larger uh, CS numbers, but mm. it's just, it's brutal. Evelyn, Aurelia, and Ezreal are all super farmed at this point. So, I, you know, I don't know that it's possible for uh, Hot Pockets to win a fight. They, I mean, they need to pick people off, and that's what they're trying to do. But, um, you know, it's, it, it, even when they do, they still lose. Yeah, they're just kind of wasting time. I mean, right now, Irox, they recognize that the AOE clear for Hot Pockets is going to be able to stall any pushes under the tower. So they, they don't want to mess up. They don't want to blow a fight that lets them get back in this game. Equilibrium Strike going down onto Cannon along with a boatload of free damage, about two thirds of his life in terms of the damage. Shots over the wall from Ezreal. When they hit Soda, it's about a quarter life on that chunk. And Aurelia's just trying to clear time, trying to clear the wave, just so you can start ramming in onto that tower. You got Aurelia's being caught by Skarner, wanted to kill, wanted something, but just died right in his tracks, right at the front door. And it's already a huge disadvantage for Hot Pocket on this May, what may very well be the last push coming in. Ezreal taking the tower when he shouldn't be. And now it's, a, now it's Evelyn's turn. Now the mid inhibitor is going to be going down. Aurelia with the rest of the team just going to be pushing on straight into the Nexus turrets. So we got 25 seconds before Skarner even comes back up. And when he does, the ultimate's not even going to be available yet. Tarek taking the tower uh, in retreat. 
Still free damage down on the turret, and Yorelli actually turning back in, wants to kill on the graves. The Sona ult just used for her, but there's the Guardian Angel gonna be coming back up in just a second. Morgana ult to try and keep her behind, but will Morgana even die? Yes, you got the Evelyn ult grabbing the kill before the Morgana ult even finishes. Sona to struggle just to get back to base, and Scarter's up, but what can you do here? Not a damn thing. Top tier three goes down, and Hitler's gonna go down, and I think this is gonna be it. Yeah, it's, there's just too much pressure on them. They do go down fairly quickly. That's there's it. the surrender vote. Yeah, they, that game has been over for you know a good 10 minutes, but um, they do get out of it. It's it's kind of it was rough. Graves, yeah. uh, Evelyn put a lot of pressure onto him you, at the end there. You know he couldn't even come into the fight because Evelyn's Q is the same range as Graves' attack range, so he he just couldn't even fight. Um, you know because Evelyn would just bully him around. Uh, same thing with Aurelia. Aurelia could dive under Graves fairly easily, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see what kind of changes they make coming into the next game um you know they, they need to get rid of some of those bruisers maybe yeah. maybe consider getting rid of evelyn since it you know it was pretty clear they didn't really understand how to uh how to deal with the evelyn pick um you know aurelia as well you know having a top bruiser that's going to be able to farm that significantly aurelia is not one of the ones you want to allow that no and it's not also too uncommon to see the aurelia bands uh you know still a lot of teams favor the aurelia top lane still a good all-around champion you saw there that Aurelia is also just strong enough, not only to just completely muscle Ken out of lane, but to split push nearly the entire time. And in addition to all the lost fights, that just it, that just added more icing onto the cake. Yep. So we'll see how things go on. Game number two, World Elite Irox and Hot Pocket Survivors gonna be coming up after this break and immediately following this match, CLG Prime gonna be here to play against the winner. We'll be back in just a little bit.